Greetings uh, to another Thinky Game stream. And um, so today uh, I'm going to go through the usual, which is just uh, cover a few of the uh, Thinky Games news that's been on the website. And also then go through three games. Uh, and always the aim is to do it within an hour. And usually that is a puzzle challenge that I always fail. So uh, the three games we're going to touch on today are Wildfire Swap and magpie and kind of wormholes um uh one one of those is uh, a couple of years old one of those is fairly new and one of those is brand new um but first let's get on with what's been going on on the thinky games website so let me just open up thinky games right so um there's the site so uh the first piece of news uh was from here up she mentioned that uh, that Lock, uh, which is um, a print book, a print, printed puzzle, is actually coming to um, Steam. Um, well, not Steam so much, probably probably on Itch as well, but it's a, there's going to be a video game version of it. Um, and, and, and here's the, the, the trailer. I haven't looked at Lock myself, but I know those who play it have a good time with it. Now, um, you can download a free PDF uh, of Lock itself, the you know the original, because Lock Digital isn't out yet. Um, but the issue is, you can no longer <laughs> you can no longer get a print copy uh, at the moment. Um, so um, apparently, um, Lock was mentioned uh, on Shut Up and Sit Down, which is a well-known board game review site, and uh, and now indeed. Uh, you can't get one at the moment. They are doing a reprint, um, and here it is. Here's the uh, here's the moment that Lock was unveiled. It's Lock. There you go. It's, it's Lock, and that's it. That was the end of the uh, the last the copies that they the printed show today out. Is Lock a tiny? All right, so um, I'm going to move on from Lock now uh, onto the next piece of news, which is can, uh, can of wormholes, which just um, which actually came out yesterday, uh, and so there was a, a, a small preview of this from Matt. Uh, what was that ten days ago? There we go. Uh, also, uh, news that Polybridge Three is coming out. Uh, I haven't actually played the original Polybridge. <laughs> I think I've got a copy, uh, but I, I've never played it. Um, I just. A game where you sort of there you go build a bridge and do crazy things with your with vehicles trying to get over them it always looked fun to me and uh, I've just <laughs> I bought a copy and just never got around to playing it it's the story of my life uh, and then um, Corey has done um, a review of Storyteller, uh, which has just come out after, I don't know, it feels about 30 years of development. Um, let's see down here. So it won the uh, Nuovo Innovation Award in the 2010 Independent Games Festival. Um, so um, the verdict seems to be uh, it's a nice looking game. Uh, it's not particularly challenging if that's what you're expecting. Um, and um, it's done maybe in a couple hours or something. Oh, good morning, Vfig, and hi uh, to Marcus Don. So I've swapped your, your replies around. That's very good for me, isn't it? Uh, I, I, I work by scripts, you see, and you've basically given me a script to work off there. Um, so yeah, that's a story. You can read all of what Corey uh, has said on the website. So that's, um, that's the quick round of updates there. So we're just gonna get straight on into game. So let's take a look at Wildfire Swap. So where is my button for Wildfire Swap? There it is, found it, found it, there it is. So this was uh, released uh, in 2021. And I have to work a bit here. I always have problems with the uh, <laughs> full screen options here. Let's see, Let me just, I'll just put it up. But I've always got a little bit of an issue with toggle borderless windowed. Still not quite there yet. <laughs> I have to do this every time. I do not know why. Toggle full screen. There we go. Right. So Wildfire Swap came out in 2021 for Windows and Mac. And um, 
I don't think it's that well known. I mean, it, it popped up on, um, I mean, Thinking Games uh, spread the news that it was on discount as part of the Steam Spring Sale, I think. And I thought, well, let's take a look. Um, Fire-based fire games are always kind of interesting. And <laughs> I was just testing and I couldn't stop playing. So, you know, we've already got like um, positive, uh, positive uh, inclination for me there. Uh, so let's just go for a brand new slot. Um, and <laughs> slight gooey thing, Yui, Yui thing. Uh, I expect when I press the slot, it would just start, but it doesn't. You have to select the slot and hit the start button. All right, so here we are, a uh, well-known um, puzzle adventure map where you know, you've know you got a little path and you just select the puzzles. These are all obviously locked. I'm gonna start off with the first um, level, save the house. Uh, sorry, my head is in the way of the, the title of the puzzle, but I shouldn't get in the way of the actual puzzle. So it's pretty straightforward, uh, at least what I've seen of it so far. I mean, the idea is straightforward, not necessarily execution of the puzzles. So you've got a house <laughs> and you've got trees and you can basically swap tiles over. So I can make this house swap there and the fire is expanding through the trees. And I've got to make sure the house doesn't get burnt. There we go. The fire can't cross the empty land and the house is safe. <laughs> um, I don't think this has any, um, what's the word? Um, this has any, um, what's that? I mean, it's not metaphorical in terms of real life. You don't just like jump your house around to escape a forest fire. But um, I think um, it's okay because it's just a, a very interesting mechanic. I mean, it looks like it's quite simple, but it um, it gets you thinking at times. So here's the next uh, level of scales. So obviously, if we don't move this house, it's going to get burnt straight away. Let me just show you if I just do that one there. Yep, a house burned down. That. Um, right, so... Uh, let's have a look. So am I going to jump that one? I have to jump that one. I have to jump... That one because that's gonna get, get burned and then we have to do this one as well there we go straightforward stuff so hot hands so where am i going to go now so this fire is going to go here i have to move the house uh away from the fire otherwise it's going to get burned straight away so i could move it here now the fire is next door so then i can swap the fiery tree there so that's the then again you know it, the, it's very gentle tutorial curve and then we've got a level called tricky um, so um, maybe I do this is that gonna get burnt otherwise and still gonna get burnt unless I move it so maybe I move it down here and then this house is gonna get burnt so the solution here is to move this fiery tree away locked scales so this is like that other one we had earlier on this has got to be moved and then this has got to be moved and then we can't move this house uh, it's a little grey um, square around it so it's stuck um, so what do we do here the only thing we can do is move this fiery tree here this tree is now next to our house and we have to move that tree and we're all good Now, I was, what's the word? I was just barging straight through all of these and I wasn't sure if I was learning anything uh, because I was like, mm, yeah, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I think I gotta do this. I was very iterative, like, okay, that didn't work, let's do this. The levels are so small that I didn't need to think very hard just to try something different. Um, that's not to say I haven't got stuck. So I think, you know, I haven't seen the last 75% of the game yet. So it does get quite tricky. Uh, this is a level called Tricky Chain. <laughs> uh, tricky, as I said. Um, let's see, so this is gonna get burnt here. So I'm gonna have to move this tree here. That tree gets burnt. I can't move this tree. So I'll move that house here and then you've got the burning tree there. That should be that. Hides in corner. 
So, um, let's see. So this is how I was good. I was generally approaching the levels. Like, well, let's just do something. I don't know. Should I go left or should I go right, or should I move the tree? Let's try going left. So the fire chases us from both directions, and the fire is chasing us. And I think we're kind of screwed. My feeling. Uh, if I move that there, no, we're not. We're not. Hides in corner. We just move the fiery tree there, and. We're done. Uh, as another small uh, user interface issue, I sometimes find I'm clicking the wrong cell. Uh, fire line. So, you know, the square is here. And because of the... I think this isn't the only game I've had this issue with. I think it was with... Um, oh, there's another puzzle game, which is a bit like, like slightly um, um, fake 3D, you know? And it makes you feel like you want to click the top, but if you click that, top of that house, you're actually clicking the cell above. Um, and if I say, oh no, no, that's not what I want, and then I click that, it does a swap. So I, I end up doing that a lot. Okay, let's, let's take a look at this one. Um, so we've got these two houses here and fire. I'm guessing I need to get them into the corner or something. Let's just move them over. Uh, like that. Yeah, this... Mm, okay, I can move that there. Then move this house up away from that fire. Then... Yeah. You can do that. The fire is controlled. And then it's on to world two. Now, I then noticed... <laughs> there, there was a star here. I can't access it. And then, if you look carefully, there are now some trees with fires on, and these are sort of uh, the optional, harder levels. So this is Left Arrow, which I think had me stuck for a little while. But let's just take a look. I'll just put this burning tree over here with the rest of the fire. That's right. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking we need to make a little safe space, so... Maybe we need to move the fire over here away, but let's just do that. I think that gives us... Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, that's... <laughs> uh, I've already I've already uh, internalized some of the rules I learnt um, how to play this. Cause the, uh, I think when you first play, you focus a lot on moving the house. And later on, you start focusing more on moving the trees, the burning trees around, which is... which you. I didn't have in my head initially, so I failed a lot of these because I was always focusing on getting the, the house moved. So apologies if I'm just skipping to the end here in terms of, you know, learning. Um, oh, there we go. We've got uh, little um, birds or are they um, bugs. We'll go for birds, okay? They're little birds around the trees. Um, let's see. One of these really got me stuck. What's this one? This is a level called Lockdown. Yep, this is the one. This is the one that really, really um, did my head in. Because it seemed like whatever I did, I could not win. You know. So, you can't move these trees. The fire is going to come here. There's nothing you can do. You can't move the house. This You have to stop fire getting to the house from two different directions. Um, so, I thought, okay, well... For example, I can move this tree here, which will put a sort of fire break going downwards. This does not help us <laughs> going upwards. Uh, uh, sorry, going to the, to the left here. So, move that up there. Great. And as soon as I put this across, you know, it's kind of like a bit of a disaster. It's now... I can't think of any way to stop that fire going down here. Um, if I leave it, I mean, obviously I can save it from this direction. I've moved that over. That's great. From this direction, it's safe. But down here, no dice. Good thing is I've completely forgotten how to do this level. Um, so if I do a reset, the only thing, I, I see, the other third, third slight n uh, nitpick. The reset takes just like a fraction too long. Uh, it just blanks for a second. I'm like, come on, come on, faster, faster. You know what it's like, puzzle games. 
they're they're so stressful and and they they they're so fast that you know that that small gap waiting for the level to come back up annoys me so much <laughs> um so let's take a look let's there's nothing you can do around here this space irritates me you know it's like there's nothing you can do with it <laughs> it's just it's just um oh you know it's just like trolling me Oh, replanting all those trees takes time, Joel. I know I should be more um, more patient about replanting forests. Okay, so I think the only move to do is this. Can you swap diagonal? No. No, it's only horizontal and vertical lines. Okay, so the fire spreads that way. If I was to move this here... Then the thing is, you need to get dirt in there to be able to, you know, make a, some space. Usually, if you just swap um, a burning tree with an ordinary tea, tree, that it literally does nothing because if the fire is just going to spread to the to the to the tree anyway, and you've moved the the fire forward or backward or whatever, it's it usually doesn't do anything. Um, so. Don't forget to email the fire department. Looking forward to hearing from you. This sunny gym. Um, perhaps if you visualize the moves as moving the empty tiles, it helps. Yes, that's an interesting point for Marcus Don. Um, you have to start thinking of the empty tiles as um, objects to, to move around. Um, as opposed to just trees and houses. It's more of to do with manipulating space in some sense. And that's the only way to stop the fire getting to the house. I can do. If I, I move that tree there, see now there's nothing I can do down here. I, I can't get a space down here to stop this fire. So you see this is the only move you can make, right? This first one. There's nothing swapping trees does nothing around here. It's the only tree that's available. There's no doubt that this is your first move. There's plenty of doubt of what my second move is. I feel like I need to move this up here to make get space ready, but me? If I move this up here, then this up there. Again, now this is safe, but now this side is completely screwed. Um, there's nothing I can do here to stop the fire. <laughs> this is ex so it's gr brilliant. I've forgotten how to do this level already. Um, you can see exactly how tricky it was. So that's your first move. There's only there's three moves, right? I can move this up here, move this here, move this across here. I feel like this is the key, some in some way. I move that there. See, so, you know, I think I'm at the point where both. Both are kind of screwed. Um, I could move this across at the expense of this branch. I move that there, and because of this lock tree, there's nothing you can do, right? Well, maybe you can. Hang on a second. Maybe I have enough turns to do it. There we go. Oh my god. The fire is controlled. <laughs> I'm not sure. So it's an interesting level. I really had to work on getting rid of the possibilities, but I don't know if I if I learned a lesson from it. Like, what's the what's the crucial what's the crucial point here that I, I should have learned? That I, I definitely iterated through and figured out this is wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, and I drilled down to a solution. But I don't know if I learned a lesson, a tool from that. But that wasn't to say it wasn't enjoyable. I mean, like I think a lot of the circle chess. Uh, puzzles were very similar to that, where I didn't learn a lesson, but I was able to drill down and dismiss possibilities. Okay, so anyway, these are the uh, um, you know so the bonus levels, and then if you open, if you do unlock all these optional puzzles, then you get the star puzzle. Uh, let's take a look at World Two quickly. I not played too much in here. Skip is the first one. Definitely not does not mean skip the level. 
So uh, Marcus Don saying he loves the swap mechanic and the cellular automata combination. Yeah, there's something almost um, almost roguelike about it in in a, in a sense, you know. Um, let's see where we are. So you've got these this grass fire. So huh, you're gonna love this mechanic. <laughs> yeah, fire just burns through immediately. Um, so it um, it's like portals for fire, I guess. I don't know. So twigs. So that was just the tutorial level. So obviously, if I don't move the house, um, it's going to burn in the very next turn. So let's move this tree, for example. Boom, there we go. House is burned down. So if I move the tree uh, this here, I think uh, we lost. <laughs> Note to self, says Sunny Jim. Uh, keep fire away from grass. This isn't going to work because the fire is going to go here and I can't do anything to swap it around. Right, I just, it's unwinnable. So is this solution? Oh, I can't go up either with that. So I'm, is a solution to move the tree up? I, looks like it. <laughs> no, yes. Yes, it is. It's stalled the fire long enough so that I could go down. The interesting thing is, um, I haven't played any levels where this is important yet, but you notice the grass all extinguished. Um, so I haven't played a level where that's become important yet. But obviously that's a, another thing you need to take account of. Let's do um, Knife and Order Matters. Hmm, are these are uh, bonus levels. I think you can't get access to the optional levels until until you've actually done all the main ones. So let's just do one more. Knife or order matters. I think I've done both of these before. Order matters. So we've got fire here. Well, let's see. If I move that... No, 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 no. It's a swap two trees over. If I move this tree here, that will protect that house. If I move this house here, that will protect that house. And the question is, what do I do here? I think so the fire is going to go to the grass and that will kill the house immediately so if I move the house into the corner I think that's the end of me yeah because the fire will reach that tree straight away so I think we move this grass down there oh no 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 I destroyed this house Maybe I move the house here to the tree. All right, take care, V-Fig. Um, and I'll move the, the tree up there. Well, that's that. So that is wildfire swap. Let me just uh, grab the, the Steam uh, link for you. So it's on Windows and Mac if you're interested. I think that's about Let's see, so what have I done of the game so far? Go back to the main menu. And how much did I do there? Yeah, that's about fifth of the game I completed. But as you can tell, some of those puzzles are gonna take a little bit of time. Lockdown is just an example of a puzzle which was genuinely tricky. Um, and with doing all the optionals on the first la on first world, I did about 25% of the game. So I think the game is maybe three or four worlds, uh, of which you've just seen all of one and some of two. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna just uh, carry on with that because um, I quite like the the simple mechanics of it. Um, but who knows, maybe they'll introduce fire hydrants later on or something like that. <laughs> I'll just invent mechanics on the, on the fly. There we go, Joel, let's make it up. Right, so that was Wildfire Swap. So let's move on to exiting the game. So let me just change the stream information to reflect. We're next going to do something called Magpie. Oh God, Magpie isn't even there. Of course it isn't. It's a seven day roguelike challenge game. Right, go back to the Thinky Games page. So uh, I've got Magpie here. So this was uh, an entry for the seven day roguelike challenge this year. Um, and Corey brought it to my attention. Uh, Corey, of course, being the um, editor of 
Thinky Games, and um, he worked with on Sunil, the developer, on his on the previous Seven Day Roguelike Challenge entry mosaic, which I liked a lot. Um, so Sunil uh, has made uh, this by himself, and it's uh, it's more like a a brow like um, where the mechanics are kind of uh, interesting and strange. Um, so it's a browser game, so you should be able to play in anything. Let's just run the game. I'm just making sure I don't forget. I'm supposed to say something. I think Sunil is living in Madrid. That's where he's based. Okay, so let me see if I can uh, full screen this up. Make things better. There we go. So I am extremely poor at this game. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> um, and the high score is here. Uh, the top score is 381 Tan, who I believe might be the developer of Slice and Dice. Um, it's 282. I have not got anywhere near this score. I'm usually stuck about 20, 30. Uh, I haven't learnt everything there is about the game. I'm still a little bit confused about these little pieces around here. So you're a magpie and there's the uh, enemy. Uh, who's got that, that that's a heart at the bottom there it's one health and what i've discovered is that this is the magpie and you're basically shields let's say, say shields or so what you've got on each side so i've got a twig on each side so if i go up uh i can hit the worm above me there we go hit with the, the twig side and i picked up a coin so that's been added to my right side Um, now we've got two worms, so I can easily take these out. Uh, pick up another coin. Now, do I want to take the coin on my right or to, or above me? Let's take it on the right. So we've got two coins on the right now. If you wait too long, <laughs> uh, you do get... Um, yeah, there we go. Cat comes in with four health, and that's definitely not something you want to have a fight with. Okay, so two worms. Uh, now we've got that classic roguelike issue of, oh, that's two turn, that's two spaces away. If I move, I'm going to get hit, um, and you can't wait. So I've added the coin to my right side. So I've got three coins, and now it says uh, I have to choose have a die or a safety pin. So the die apparently does one to three damage randomly and the safety pin, well, it, it looks like it does two damage in front and one behind, I guess. Can you move into a ball? Uh, to, sorry, uh, Sunny Gem is asking, can I move into a wall and burn a turn and essentially wait? Uh, no, uh, typically you can't do that in, in rogue legs. You can definitely look like you're trying though. I've chosen the safety pin, uh, but I'm not sure that's going to get me out of Dodge City here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to put myself in the line of fire. Okay, so I've been hit on the left, and the twig has been damaged. Um, and if you get damaged twice, the twig will disappear, and then you are completely vulnerable on that side. So if I attack with the twig, there we go. Okay, so this game, this this roguelike is is all about directional damage and protection, and it focuses your mind heavily on you know where you want things to happen. Right, so I can attack that worm above me. And I've got the safety pin. That's okay. That worked. So let's collect a coin or above me. Okay, a worm. If you step right, you'll be able to get that worm. Yeah. And I get hit again. Right, let's get another coin above me. So I need three coins to upgrade a side. Yeah. So if I go down one, it's going to give me a problem with that worm. If I can. 
It should be okay if I can get to combat with this worm, then it means I burn a turn in position. Oh, nice. So I can't get this uh, coin on, on above me because I have to come from below. So I have to be left or right. Let's go for the left. Try and uh, get ready to replace the twig, I guess. Oh, now we've got a, a rat. This has got two hearts. Oh dear. Uh, so we can take the worm below. Let's see if this safety pin attacks twice to the right, like I'm hoping. It does. Woo! <laughs> and it gave me a coin. Nice. Uh, let's try and get that on the left. And then let's get this one above me. So I can choose a vial and glasses. Now I do not. So the vial looks like when it's been damaged once, it gets stronger. Uh, but the glasses, uh, what does that mean? I, so this looks like you would damage in front of you and this damages to the sides. So this is what happened to me before. I was like, I'll get the glasses. And it, <laughs> I just died all the time. <laughs> I'm going to go for the vial. I can understand it. Let's go for the vial. Here comes the cat. Okay. All right. I'm one away from this guy. Hey, do I want a key or glasses? And key seems to do up and to the right, I guess. Let's just use that. Yeah, just one and up to the left there. Okay. Actually, I'm not checking what are we getting points for. I'm on nine points. I'll have to check if it's to do with creatures terminated. Oh, Crowdy Sun says he had a few runs end wearing glasses. Um, is that going to work for me? If I go down one, oh, I'm not, I don't like the idea of this. Maybe I should get the vial. Yeah, I'm not strong enough to take on the rat um in one go i think i'll just i'm gonna get damage i'm gonna take the damage from the top here sunny gem says not sure how to interpret the d-pad style icons yeah that's the trouble i'm having um okay now the vial should be more powerful now uh, you can see the two little red stars i know it's pretty small in your screen um on the screen so two stars i think that's when you go forwards it's doing two damage uh, I think we'll just evade the rat. Put the key in. So Crowley Sun says took him a couple of runs to figure out their damage pattern. Yeah, that's that's my feeling is that they're the damage pattern. But it's I wasn't sure how the glasses work because it looked like the damage was either side of you, uh, which means like it's just gonna get hurt if you try and attack that direction. Right? Ah, a gold coin at the bottom. I don't know the purpose of the gold coin. Right, okay, now we're being forced into... Oh, I really want to get this... No, no, no. What? What happened there? I moved to the right. I didn't move. What was that about? Uh, that was unexpected, and <laughs> now I feel... Wait, did I attack that rat on the other side or something, or...? Okay, uh, something has happened here which I don't understand. That rat to my left there has taken some damage, probably at the time when I... I had that sticky move which didn't seem to work, and I'm like, I don't quite see what happened there. Uh, it's not looking good. Oh, now I'm completely vulnerable to the bottom. Yeah, I should have realized that was going to happen. Ah, uh, it's over. Ooh. 
And with that classic sound effect, I scored 12 points. <laughs> that is a typical magpie run for me. And I think um, if I play a bit more, I'll get better at it. Start to understand where I should deploy uh, the damage. Let's have a very quick, one more quick run. Um, and this time I'll, I'll talk less about what I'm doing and just go around and do it. Beaver fringe dominating all brow likes. Okay, out here. What's this gonna look like? Yeah, it's not great. Let's take damage to the top. So it looks like coins are where you get to score from. Ah. Fine. And I have to move. Yeah, that's good. Oh, how come I got that worm? One out. Ah. Uh, where do I want? That's on the right because it's already got one coin there. Ah. Uh. No. Oh. <laughs> uh. Always another thing is like, you don't have to kill everything in roguelikes if you can get away with any kind of um, damage, uh, any any kind of danger. Oh, this is not good. Okay, so above me I got an eggshell, fragile, so it is two damage, but it looks like it will, it has no um, shielding capability, it'll just go in one turn. Is the move deterministic? Uh, it says, ask Sunny Gem. Normally, moving is deterministic in these, but I don't know. Someone else might be a better understanding of this because, you know, some of these games you find that certain creatures will move more left and right and others will move more up and down when they have to make a determination which direction they want to approach you. Uh, let's take die. And then try not to die. Yeah. At least we can... Replace the twig. Uh, I'm going to take a um, safety pin or a thimble, which is durable. I guess that means it's got more strength to it. Oh, here we go. Well, that's already got injured. <laughs> Maybe it, it can take more injuries. Because that um, red um, crack shape is much weaker. Uh... <laughs> I don't like this. This could easily end in a disaster. I feel like I want to get the die around. But... Oh my god, no, that was the wrong move. <laughs> oh. Okay, I can attack left. But I go down. And then attack up. I might get rid of that rat with the die. No, I didn't get rid of the rat with the die. Try one more time, above. Oh, it worked. That worked anyway. What a disaster this screen has been. Oh, I really should have been thinking about where to put those coins, not just picking them out randomly, because I am now completely vulnerable on the bottom and the left. Okay. Oh, right. Do I want a key or a thimble? Let's get another thimble. Let's, I guess, do that. Uh, then attack to the... Do I want to do that? Maybe not. Oh. Yes. No! <laughs> Go away. Oh. No, oh, this is game over. If I go up, I'm dead. If I go left, the die will be taken out. And it'll, it'll need two hits to get rid of the, the rat. There's only one possibility. No, no, if I can move back and forth. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, how am I going to survive the next screen, though, with three unshielded sight? Oh, it's a gold coin! Oh, I can have a nail or a fork. So a fork, 
I'll hit all three spaces to the left, and a nail is just a dead two. Um, you know what? Let's let's go for one all to the left. Great. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, can I get past them? Yeah. Oh my god. It's a... Is that what's that? A, a weasel? No. No. <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's just attack something and then die. So, a high score of 15. I went from 12 to 15. So, you, I think you can easily see how this gets kind of involving. But honestly, 381 points. What kind of game is that? <laughs> oh, hello, Greg. You've just missed Magpie. I might have switched to a uh, can of wormholes. Um, so, Crowley Sensor said he asked Brown himself about which directions enemies look at first. And he randomizes them, which is fair for a roguelike. But this is extra work to program, so it's hard to tell with other developers. To be fair, I think even if they're deterministic, I usually don't know if there's any games which are deterministic. Um, I haven't really noticed. I, I figured out the rule. Okay, so we'll leave Magpie there. I should give you the link. There you go. Uh, that is, there it is. That's the itch link. And so we will finally end on Can of Wormholes by Hunted Finger, which is an Australian developer, obviously, with a name like that. Okay, uh, onto my loading screen. Let me just, just take that out. And we can start up. Can of Wormholes. <laughs> show, the, show the game. So this was just released uh, yesterday. And... Uh, it's available for Windows and Mac. Um, this is an interesting game. Uh, I played a little bit. It's <laughs> I've made 3% progress so far. We'll just start a new one. Oh, hello, Tarana. Uh So, Solid Horse is saying uh, he's played it a bit. Very weird theme. Yes, I don't know what to make of the... <laughs> oh, what's going on in this game? So, Worms going down a tunnel, which I guess is what we're doing, flying through wormholes. But there's a tennis ball. Horse wondering if it's sewage pipes. It could be. Does it look like. I guess it's real worms? <laughs> and. Not exactly sure what we're looking at here. I mean. Um, I think that's kind of wormholes written on the wall there, but in in an alien language. Okay, so <laughs> now we get control of it. So At least O's are still O's. Okay, so I can go backwards and forwards, but I'm stuck in here. I can't turn left and right. So, what you have to do... Smash the window. And now we've got this worm sticking out over here. Launch wormhole. Um, X. Pressed X and the worm went into the can. And 
turned me around. to say <laughs> about what you're witnessing um there is a picture um on the wall there my head's in the way i should just move my head excuse me a second let's move myself over there 1.21 gigawatts um so we've got a picture of um flower uh, well a, a plant with a worm in it and over after time, it looks like the flower, is, the plant is dead. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> gigawatts. I want to say gigawatts. <laughs> Screw the chat. <laughs> That's it. Um, yeah, all the worms maybe ate the leaves. There are pick. There are plant pots here, aren't they? But. I'm just trying to rank who is flying this ship. Is it people or is it worms? It looks like the it it might have been people at the start. Sure. There's an interesting physicality to it. What I find interesting as well is that when you get into the puzzles in a minute, um, the puzzle, the basic puzzles are sort of fairly simple. I mean, the the, the mechanic is quite a simple thing that you're dealing with initially. Um, but there's so much uh, work got into the sort of the graphical um, embedding of these puzzles into the environment, um, which is uh, you know all this like crazy stuff with a can going around. Okay, there's a graveyard here, which I didn't notice when I was playing first time. The graveyard of worms. It still launch wormholes. So I, when I go over a worm, I change direction. Launch wormhole. Okay, get it on there, and <laughs> I don't know what this that is going on here. It's just um, uh, quite uh, weird, and we've got this little. Uh, worm-like creature that's got something hanging on its front of its mouth there. You can see it's like it's just jiggling there. So the puzzle is so you just got to basically form the shape and then something quite odd happens. Yeah! <laughs> it just it just dissolves the creature and here it puts fuel in a little rocket. Uh, so Taranem is asking if the the little light is you. It's a good point. I don't. I I don't know. At the moment, I just feel I'm the can. You might write the the the, the light might be us. Oh, okay. I, I get into the ship here. Those are like toy tubes with fluid. You hold, and slip away. They were too heavy. The worm leaves. But the can can go on. Only a can can. Yes, the light is on the can as well. Can I say I finished World One? <laughs> so I've got a new picture here of uh, it looks like birds being fed worms. Honestly, that is all kind of uncomfortable for me <laughs> to watch that. I mean, it's great. I guess we've got we've got worms as legs now, but that was a little bit uh, wow. So anyway, uh, and we've got on the screen here that a bird will feed worms. I guess it's in a rotten fruit to its babies. Maybe it's a, a warning video. But I've not done many puzzles. I've only done about a couple more puzzles, I think, after this. Uh, when I was testing it out. <laughs> Taranam says, getting splashbacks to the 
baby head spider from Toy Story. That is a good point. Okay, so I guess this is access to this puzzle. Alright, so we're gonna make this shape up here. Can't get through here, so I have to go around. Oh, I think we need to undo a bit. Go around here. You know what it looks like to me? It looks like a, a deflated balloon. That bit does not like a deflated balloon. That is... Well, I'm going to just say it. I think that's the Japanese katakana character for key. Uh, and I think it is a key. <laughs> yeah, that's a letter. It, it is... Um, let me just walk along here. You come to the... Oh, I'm going to go straight in the other room so I can just explain. There's a door at the end here with three keys at the top. But I think it was on the alien language can of Kurt Wormhole's test. Hmm. Test, did I say text, I meant. Uh, Salty Horse has then copied in the uh, Japanese character. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get the next one. So there's an interesting backing up mechanic here. So if I go backwards against the direction I'm, I've am i moved, I'll just, you see, I'll just go around the bend I've got there. But if I, and I can do it now here, but if there's no bend, it'll just keep on going backwards. And see, I've actually, I got stuck now. I can't actually go backwards. And that's what the, uh, the trick, tricky bit is in this puzzle. So I go here, but I, can't go back. So I think you have to make sure you extend your body long enough so that you can go backwards here. Second key. And let's go for this one. This is what I was saying when I um, saw the uh, saw the trailer for a kind of wormholes, and I was like, "What's going on?" I could see there was a simple puzzle involving worms and holes, but it's like, "What's the rest of this?" <laughs> um, okay, so I believe we got the developer on the chat as well, which says Sunny Jum. Um, very quiet, <laughs> listening to all my observations. Um, when you're a few steps away from the solution, says Salty Horse, uh, the solution audio cue starts and waits for you to make the final step. I'll have to listen out for that. Very satisfying, like it predicts you. Yeah, so my initial thought was to go around here, but you can't come off the edge there. What is very interesting as well is that, you know, it looks like you have an arena here, but actually um, you can move off the edge, um, which, is sort of unusual for puzzle games. They've usually got a wall or a deadly space, and it isn't. This is actually part of the puzzle. I find that very, very interesting. So, uh, I was surprised you could go OB, but I guess not in time. I heard my name. I was in the kitchen making dinner with wireless headphones. <laughs> I could tell which puzzles you were playing by the audio. Oh no. Right, so I've got to... Ah, and now this this is doomed, I think. Because I'm going to be stuck going backwards. If I remember rightly, it took me a moment to figure this one out. Huh. More than a moment. Like... How did I... I need to... Oh no, I'm doing undo. <laughs> I'm not doing backwards. That's why everything's not, not working out. Yeah, that's good. I gotta stop hitting undo. I'm trying to go backwards and undo seems to do it. It's screwing up my thinking. Right, don't press undo, Joel. Right, uh, don't, 
I was about to do it again. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I want to undo that move. Go backwards. Ah. I like that. <sighs> oh, but first, uh, Salty Horse. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I was not listening to the queue. I was so happy that I was, I'd finished the level. I didn't listen for the audio queue. Let's look for the, listen for the next one. I have enough to get into the next screen. Sunny Jump. That bird on the screen in the other room was an Australian magpie, which is very fitting considering the last game. Oh, that... Confluence of events. Okay. Do I have to reverse out? Big 3D room for two puzzles is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work, is it? I think I've got to turn round inside here. Because there's no way I can get around to the other side like that. If I go too far, I mean, <laughs> can I even. Oh, I see. That's there's no turning around there. Oh, this is tricky. Oh, maybe I. No. <laughs> It knows when I've failed. You can hear it, right? <laughs> you can hear the piano steps. <laughs> My previous hint still applies to the Salty Horse, but first. Uh, Sunny Gem, the developer, says the law of the game is completely over the top and weird. It's possible to piece it together after finishing the game, but even then I won't be winning any writing awards. Oh, I don't know. IGF got a narrative award. Might work. Oops, I didn't, I'm going too far. And I turn... I don't... I feel like I... I Once I've done that, you know, I, I can't turn around anymore. Dark worms. Oh, maybe not going like I don't know. Oh. That. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> that was not what I was planning. But that was uh that was definitely a moment of revelation. Interesting. Yeah, this is already like um freaking my brain out. That's very interesting. So um Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm quiet for a second because I'm just, I'm just processing what this means about you might have to set up bends which you can move around so that you can do a reverse. So obviously reversing is a big part of this. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna do it one more time just to just to refresh my memory and listen for the audio cue. <laughs> All right, so what did I do? Uh, I bent like that. All right, I see it with a different color now. Different color. Yeah, that's the audio cue. Right. Okay, we can open that door. Another problem with I'm doing the streams 
is that I turn my volume down quite quite low. <laughs> if it's too loud, I feel like I have to shout over it. Um, though I often miss subtle sounds. So we've got a little puzzle here, which looks like something else has happened with these green dots. <laughs> I love knocking these plant pots. Busted out the MIDI keyboard for that bad boy. The Sunny Jump. And we got another puzzle there. Guessing Snake. Uh, tra Taranam says Snake mechanics. The dots make you longer? Question mark. We'll find out in a second. Go. We can go up here. Oh, I'll need five for the next room. Sorry, my, I think my head was in the way there. Go back a bit. That is, a, that is very good, actually. I've been pointing out that the, the walls, <laughs> the, le the legs go up on the walls. It's not just like, map. Okay. <laughs> oh, and you can fast travel through the rooms as well. Interesting. Okay, let's try out this first puzzle here. <laughs> so informative, uh, says Taranam. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Salty horse, bit surprised there was a map. So let's find out what these dots do. <laughs> yep, it does make you longer. I have a feeling we don't want to be long. Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? Because you can't fall into the hole. Do I want... I don't even know how many we need. Let's just see. Oh. Oh, I ate another one. <laughs> you know what? Let's just restart this. I just don't know how many we need. Um, I could count, but I don't want to. I ate one. What's up? Oh, okay, I need one, two, three, four, five, I think. Try that. No, I need six. There we go. Um, so, Sunny Jim says, I originally had the wormhole land right back in the can if you threw it straight up like that, but it got annoying. Yeah, I think it's because, uh, it's because you can use this to target, but it's it's just easier standing over it and just pressing the button and having it go straight up and down. Wait, oh, I, I have to aim it in there <laughs> after I said that. Okay, there we go. Okay, this one reminds me of... Oh, I think this is the one I last tried before I said, like, I think that's enough testing. And I failed. <laughs> yeah. Or did I? I, I didn't. Okay. I think I have to get this one first. There's a definite order to this because several of these will kill you if you try and do them. And if I go for the next one, I'm doomed. See, I'm stuck, so... I can't do that. I to get this. I can't get that one. Hopefully that's long enough, right? What? No. I gotta put a bend in, otherwise that's not gonna work out. No, it's not going to work. What? Uh, Salty Horse says, when the worm drops in the goal and the floor closes, there's some liquid splatters. Does it get squished? That's what it looks like to me. It looks like it's being squished and minced up. Do I actually have enough length? I haven't actually checked. 
No, I need all three dots. I see. Okay, if I need all three dots, then do I have to like turn around or something? Okay, so... Alright, so if you're about to vacate a space, you can move into it. So I think these are interesting uh, puzzles. I'm not necessarily sure I'm completely wedded to puzzles where it feels like I have to do counting. You know, how many dots did I need and things like that. It's interesting to teach the mechanic, but it's interesting to teach the mechanic, but I hope I don't have to do too much more counting like that. Uh, right, so, okay. I'm guessing I need all the dots there. This game is powered by worm goop. Indeed. <laughs> you can't eat for your butt. <laughs> Learn that lesson. <laughs> okay. I was just thinking, oh, I know how to solve this. Just don't get... Just don't get this one. Wait a second, maybe that is the answer. Can I push it back? I can't. There you go, that's the solution. And I can come out. But says no to food. No. <laughs> I think this I think that's that's broken again. No. Okay, have I done some bad stuff here? Let's go back a bit. I got the first one. I pushed it into the corner there. Oh. Maybe I get this one now? Yes. Okay. It's all straightforward if you think about it. Oh, I've already gone past my uh, hour mark. Uh, I'll do one more puzzle. It's um, it's quite fun. I I'm just I I actually want to see what's in the next room. <laughs> I just want to see what's in the next room, but then I will stop. And so if everybody wants to have a go at this themselves, then you know, they don't get too much spoiled. Oh, oh <laughs> Salty Horse didn't solve this one, so he's off. <laughs> cool game. All right, thanks, Salty Horse. I might not, might not even solve it now. Uh, okay, so if I... Let's just see what happens. Since, so I have to get that one, I have to get that one. Oh, without too long. Okay, so I only need one. Is that correct? Yeah, I need one of these. Now that would seem like that would be good enough, but I think the problem... It's fitting into the hole. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I think the only way to... In theory, it seems that the only way to do it would be to go through the middle here, come down through the middle. Okay, let's start again. And if we go down now, we'll take, we'll eat two dots and it's not be one. So maybe we have to, I don't know. Maybe we eat one dot and, see that, that doesn't work either. I was thinking maybe we can go in and reverse and push those dots along, but I can't put a bend in. Unless we come... Oh, I think I have the idea. I think I get the first dot. And then back out, but I've just realized that's going to kill me. <laughs> I don't have a bend. I'm too short. Once I reach for it... I just go straight into the water. Oh, 
maybe I will give up. You know what? Uh, how do I... Oh, gain insight. So I guess this is the thing. I don't want to use it, but I understand that this is um, on Pinky Games. Uh, Matt said you get a sort of mini game to kind of give you the, the solution to help you like a hint how to solve the bigger puzzle. So I'm not, I don't want to, maybe we should do this on an earlier level. All right, let's have a look at that on an earlier level. Let's do it on a level we've solved. Okay, a quick look. It's okay, we've done this one. What does it say if we do gain insight? You're pushing. Push them backwards. And that would be the hint for that level, I guess. Interesting. So that's the hint system. And it may not be enough, right? You will be going, okay, great. How does that help me? <laughs> Actually, how many keys do I have? Can I just open that door? Yeah, look, I can see the next room. And I will... I will solve that level some other time. Okay. So it looks much the same in terms of environment. I guess you have to... What? Hello. Throw can. <gasps> okay. Slightly, uh, slightly uncomfortable again. Okay, and then, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wait, what's that? Oh! Hello. <laughs> well, I should just stop there now, shouldn't I? Now we're into the mushroom zone. So, uh, Crowleyson's asking, so every level has a mini level for a hint? I can't believe you've created mini levels or for every level that's 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 crazy you make me feel like i have to play every level again and just see the mini level um well i think i should stop there this is um far too much fun to uh <laughs> spoil it for everybody on the stream oh that's how you solve every puzzle well done joel finishes the stream after four hours um all right so that was um can of wormholes there's the Steam link if anybody's interested. Uh, it is on both Windows and Mac. Um, and that is a um, really delightful game. I've, I've enjoyed quite a lot of those levels. I'm interested to see what's coming up next. Um, we've got different symbols. <laughs> Sorry, I can't even stop. These are not keys anymore, are they? It's like some others. It's not the Japanese key, it's just something else. Odd. Let's look at the map. There we go. Oh, and the little flashing lights tell you where you've not finished a puzzle. <sighs> well, thank you again. Um, and yeah, I mean, um, I'm gonna, I'm just resisting the urge to just try another puzzle. I'm not gonna do it. Stop, Joe. Um, I don't know when the next stream is going to be. Um, next week, I am at the London Games um, Expo WASD. And the week after, I am on holiday, holiday, actual holiday, um, and the week after that, I would be free. So I'm guessing in three weeks' time, I don't think I can do a off Saturday stream. The next couple of weeks is pretty, pretty busy. Um, will I be at GDLX? No, I will not be at GDLX. I didn't pay the extra money to be at GDLX. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I. We'll see you probably in three weeks' time. Uh, if I don't, then the you know, messages we put out to say, don't worry, Joel's going to do a stream now. But until next time, uh, enjoy your worms.